Hey guys, my name is Mitsumio, and today I get a lot of questions for Sunday Mailbox. It's the reason why I've been doing this series for basically a decade at this point, because most of them are fantastic. They spark a great discussion, a lot of you have great ideas to change the game in a meaningful way, and it's the reason why I love this series so much. But at the same time, I also get some questions that aren't as phenomenal. Either they're just flat out weird, either they would just break the game, and so what I wanted to do today is go over some of these more ridiculous ideas. I'm not trying to shame anyone, I won't be including any names, this is meant to just be fun, uh, but considering you guys really seem to enjoy the last time I did this, like eight months ago, uh, I thought it'd be fun to kind of return to this because I've accumulated and found some more questions over these last couple of months. And so to start us off, the first question is, do you think that Ubisoft should create some new movement mechanics like sliding or jumping? So the reason why I love this idea so much is that Rainbow Six Siege is already a fairly fast paced game. I'm sure you guys have noticed, especially if you play at higher tiers, that players are constantly crouch and lean spamming all over the place to try to get any small advantage that they can against their opponents. Now imagine a three speed operator like Ash, not just crouching and lean spamming, but flying around the corner at Mach 5 and then jumping to the other side and sliding at the very end, all while maintaining a pinpoint-like accuracy. I don't know about you guys, but at least for me personally, that sounds terrifying. Now I realize that there's many people out there that would love to have these kinds of mechanics added into their FPS game because it gives them another tool at their disposal to come out on top. If you're in a sticky situation and things are getting spicy, if you need to duck behind cover, being able to literally slide behind that object would be really advantageous. Or if you could jump on that object to hit them from a different angle that they simply were not expecting or wasn't possible before, for, uh, that could be a lot of fun. I think this is one of the reasons why some players were a bit upset not too long ago when they slowed down the animation to crouch and lean to left and right. It slowed it down and made things feel a little bit more clunky. They liked to have that faster movement because it felt like it was a skill that they had acquired. And admittedly, it was a skill. It took a lot of time and investment to get to that point to be able to master those mechanics. But for someone like me, who doesn't really enjoy that kind of gameplay, I would rather take things more slow and methodical. It's the reason why I got involved with Rainbow Six Siege to begin with, to have people literally jumping around and sliding everywhere uh, sounds like a nightmare. And so I get where you're coming from. This would allow for more flexibility. It would give you more control, especially to get over some objects. It can be really frustrating when you're trying to vault or jump onto something. It just simply doesn't give you the prompts. Uh, this, is, this is definitely not the direction that I want to see Rainbow Six Siege go down. The next question is, what do you think about a new defensive operator that can transfer their life into a dead teammate? Meaning they can be behind offense without them realizing. So I, <laughs> I could not tell if this was a serious idea. Every so often I get people that send in joke operator concepts, but the one that sent this also had a bunch of other more reasonable operator concepts along with this question. And so the idea of literally being able to transfer your, your I don't even know, your consciousness on over into your teammate's body, being able to then flank the enemy because they had no idea that you now all of a sudden magically transferred on over to the other side of the map because you're some sort of necromancer is probably the most absurd idea that I've ever gotten for this series. Now, if Rainbow Six Siege had more of a fantastical or fantasy theme to it, then absolutely, this would be a really creative idea, but because this game is meant to be at least somewhat grounded in reality, I know that things have gotten a bit more futuristic over these last couple of years, but at least it's trying to be somewhat authentic, to have something like this added to the game would just be ridiculous. And if it ever does happen, the game is probably so far gone that no one's even playing anymore. The next question is, how would you feel about an offensive operator that is kind of like the martyrdom perk from the older Call of Duties, where after get taken out, he drops a nade that can damage the defender walking over him. This doesn't have an instant kill, but maybe does 60 or so damage. Do you really want to have martyrdom added into Rainbow Six Siege? I mean, there's already a lot of annoying mechanics in this game, but do we really want to have where you take someone out and they randomly just kind of drop a gadget that all of a sudden even does 60 damage to you? <laughs> 
I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with no. The Call of Duty franchise even moved away from that mechanic. That's a that's a game that's even more fast paced than Rainbow Six Siege. Like you're constantly getting into the action, and even in that game, it was frustrating. Now imagine you take out a player. You need to rush the objective because there's only a couple seconds left to get to, towards that diffuser. Uh, you run past him. Uh, his gadget drops. He takes you out, and you lose the round because of it. That, that sounds awful. And so I'm going to go with a big no on that one. The next question is, what do you think about an offensive operator who can spawn, call back up two bots once per match? One with a shield and one recruit. After the bots will move together to the objective while helping offense clear out rooms that are in the way. Do we really want to have bots added into the main multiplayer? Because I feel like this would only result in two different scenarios. Either they're going to be completely useless and they're not really going to provide any benefit to the offensive team, or they're going to result in you get taken out because you were busy actually focusing on the real players around you, and then they get a lucky headshot or however they work and take you down. Can you imagine the amount of salt and frustration that would Sue because you got taken out by a literal bot in this game. You could honestly use this to your advantage. If you have your bots charge in towards the objective, you follow suit, you see where the, the other players are defending from, and then you use that information to your advantage. Like it honestly would be really powerful if they could if they could make the AI function properly and not just be a clunky mess. I'm not really convinced that, that would be the case. Uh, but I just I'm just not really sold on this idea. It's the same reason why I've never liked the concept of having some sort of auto turret on defense that would watch your back. Like, yeah, it would be a great buff to Tachanka if his turret could physically just aim at the player and cause offense to have to duck behind cover, but do we really want to have some sort of AI introduced? I, I don't think that that'd be a good direction. It's supposed to be a competitive multiplayer video game. And while I think there are some games out there that have been able to add in a PvE element that have been successful, I just don't think it has any business being in Rainbow Six Siege. But of course, that is just my two cents. The next question is, what do you think about a sledge buff where he gets a little hammer for his drone so the drone can make its own holes and do a little bit of damage, but the drone would be slightly taller because of the mal sticking out on top. So this has to be one of the more adorable ideas that I have ever heard. All I can imagine is a little drone with a mallet on top making its way around the map and opening up small little holes for him and his buddies to make their way onto the objective. Like that just sounds adorable. Do we really need this though? Probably not. What it really makes me want more of is actual drone customization. This is something that Ubisoft teased a long time ago with Rainbow Six Siege's magic, but they haven't really done anything with it further. You could even argue that Twitch's drone, for example, has this kind of customization. Now, maybe the reason why they haven't expanded upon this is that they don't run, want to run into the same problem that they currently do with the normal cosmetics on all of the operators. I'm sure you guys have noticed on some maps there are cameras in this game that have the same color palette as the background, meaning a lot of the times you just literally cannot see that person walking up the staircase because they blend in so well with the background. They may want to avoid that very same thing with the drones. But as long as they kind of went wild with the actual customization and, and made them very obvious, no matter the actual background, uh, this could be a great addition. I would love to have something like that. And so instead of giving a Sledge an odd upgrade, that he admittedly doesn't really need, uh, give his drone a little bit of customization. That would be really cool. The next question is, wouldn't it be a good idea to add four new operators every season instead of just two? I feel like having two offense and defense would both switch up the meta in Rainbow Six Siege and allow Ubisoft to hit that 100 operator mark that they've mentioned earlier in Rainbow Six. So I am someone who would love to have as much content as I possibly can get for Rainbow Six Siege. If they were able to reliably bring us four new operators that bring something new to the table that isn't overpowered or underwhelming, and we're able to do that on a reliable basis, that would be fantastic. But let's be honest with ourselves, 
that is not even close to being possible. Even if they ramped up development and they added in like another 100 developers, like maybe, but there's gonna reach a limit. And I think we've already reached that at that point where there is just not enough ways and gadgets and, and means to be able to add new content or new operators that is able to do everything that I just described. For example, after this next big update, each season, we're only gonna be getting one new operator. Now this will give them time to rework old content content and operators like Tachanka, he's going to be getting pretty much a top to bottom rework. So he's essentially going to be a brand new character and they might be doing something similar with other existing characters. So it may not be ex exactly one each season, but you kind of get where I'm going with this. And so all in all, this is just never going to happen. Not only just from a logistical standpoint, but also the more I think about it, this would be chaos on the meta. If you have to learn four new operators each season, how they're going to interact with everyone else. And then within a short three months then there's another four operators and then another batch after that like there's no way that this game wouldn't just kind of expand and blow to the point where it is just unreasonable and so it's for those reasons why not only should it just not happen but it's just it's just not even feasibly possible uh but yeah guys that is about it for today's video i get a lot of great questions for sunday mailbox but as you can clearly tell some of them definitely step more into the interesting territory but i hope you guys enjoyed today's video uh but yeah until next time have a good one and take it easy